Hey, everybody. Welcome to the uh, second segment of the Michael Brown Show, and that means it's Hollywood in Toto, which means that Christian Toto has stumbled into the studio this evening. How are you, sir? I'm great. Just great. You lie in second. <laughs> not either. I... <laughs> This is what a broadcast professional does. He lies. It's like, I'm fantastic. <laughs> I couldn't be better. I couldn't be better. Why? What are you yeah, talking about? That's right. Uh, I've got uh, no stress. No stress whatsoever. Me either. This I don't, I don't know why, but this has been one of the worst weeks of my life. I, oh, no, I no. think that, yeah, yeah, let me back off. Okay. It's just been a sucky week. What, what, what defines the suckiness? Um, Can you say? People not following through and doing what they say they're going to do, Ooh. and I'm not talking about my producer because <laughs> she's because she's she's actually one of the good people. She, really? She? I mean, I look really at you. Her. I know. Well, I've ripped her apart earlier. <laughs> I'll rip her apart all week, but she really is one of the good people. Uh, people not doing what they say they're going to do. Um, people claiming to have expertise in an area, and then when <laughs> you finally start to drill down, you realize they have no effing clue whatsoever. About Oopsies. What they're talking about. <laughs> and that was with regard to a business matter. Ooh, yeah, yeah. it and, makes it worse. And and finally, I asked I asked my partner, "Do you want me to send the email asking the questions?" <laughs> and he goes, "Yes, because you'll be blunt." And so I did. But I sent it to him first and said, "You know, really, you should read this first <laughs> before I hit send." And he was he thought it was incredibly appropriate. Ooh, look at yeah, you. Yeah, but it it was it was blunt. A milder, gentler, but it, Mr. Brown. But it got the response we needed which was we finally got to the truth of the matter. Mm -hmm. You don't have a clue what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you've been you've been claiming to be doing all of these things and you're 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 not. So if this project's going to move forward, then mm -hmm. you need to listen to my partner who happens to be the expert. I mean, I'm just as I described it, I'm just I'm I'm mm -hmm. the uh, I'm the anchor. That's right. I'm the teleprompter. Well, now I want to hear more about this project. It sounds fascinating. I can't well at some point <laughs> I know at some point I'll I know you, you can't. Uh, so your project is still going strong at Hollywood in Toto. <laughs> strong in scare quotes. <laughs> I read it. Your mom reads it. <laughs> That's right. Your wife doesn't read it, does she? Oh, gosh, no. She doesn't listen to the show. She, doesn't, she you know, God bless her. She embraces the fact that I'm a right-of-center person. Right. It's essentially my career yeah. at this point, for lack of a better phrase. But she's not going to listen, and she's not going to read it. But I'm, let, let me just tell you from looking on the other, on the other okay. side of the fence— from someone whose wife doesn't religiously listen to me, but, you know, when I'm on Facebook and whatever, I, I see, oh, uh -oh. I see the name pop up that <laughs> she's watching. And I think, oh. And it's not that I say anything about her. It's just, it's odd. You're under the microscope? No. Yeah, I, I, don't, I just find, here's why I find it odd. Mm -hmm. Ask me how many times when... Now, Tamara doesn't go with me on speaking engagements unless mm -hmm. it's someplace that, A, she wants to go, B, <laughs> she hasn't been before, or there's a beach or a resort or a spa or something. Because she's smart. Because she's smart, right, right. And so she's going to, you know, leech off me while I'm doing the work. <laughs> she's going to be out watching the guys in the little, you know, tutus bringing her, you know, martinis <laughs> or whatever. Ask me how many times she's actually sat in one of my speeches. Less than zero. Zero. Oh, a big fat that's goose right. egg. So then, why does she listen to me on the radio? Curiosity could be love. No? <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. All right, let's put love off to the side. Yeah, let's put off. Let's put, <laughs> I think she's watch. I think I think she's because she knows me so well. Uh -huh. She's waiting for the train wreck. No, I think she's waiting for maybe like a little passive aggressive dig here or there. Oh, a yeah. little. Oh yeah, that's true because. I may say things that are inside baseball that uh -huh. she knows the entire story Ooh, about. Oh, yeah, that's it. For example, I did that earlier this week with something I had confided in a friend about. <laughs> and I got a text message as soon as I finished the story <laughs> about, you are out of your mind. I'm See, like, I'll yep. never get that from my wife because she'll never listen You'll to never the show. Listen. Never. No way. Uh, she did listen once. After the election, she went to DEF CON. Was it five? Is that the yeah. highest? And she was just like every other liberal person. <laughs> and it was very bad in her household. I think I might have mentioned this on air. 
And all of a sudden, she had to listen because if I went on air and I said, "Praise be Donald right, Trump," right? Oh boy! Yeah. The yeah. the pots and pans would be flying the, my way. Be on the couch. The, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Kid, the, the big custody battle over the kids. <laughs> you know, I'm not leaving you, but you can't touch these kids. And I know you're joking, but, but it's not it's funny. Not funny. Right. <laughs> So she's not listening. Hi, uh, honey. Love you. Miss you. All right. There's no good segue from any of that, is there? No, and of course not. But we do tangents all the time, so we can just kind of ricochet from A to B to X. Do you enjoy coming in here? What? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do. The only caveat is my, my day is always so stressful. Right. It's, always, it's like one more thing that I do. I mean, I, right. I enjoy it. I have a great time. I think it's necessary from a certain perspective. It's kind of my ego talking. But I've got... My plate is so full. My plate is just so full. I don't know what happened to my life that my plate is so full, but it is so full. But that's good for you. I mean, that's good. No, <laughs> not at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> not for my blood pressure, oh, not for okay. my sanity. Right. So it's not the show's fault, not the segment's fault, not even your fault. I can't even blame you. Well, here's the reason I say that. Okay. The other day I happened to, maybe it was last, sometime, I, I forget when it was, but in the past, say, seven days, Okay. I asked my audience on YouTube and Facebook, uh -oh. tell me, <laughs> what you like, what you dislike about the program. Good night, everybody. I'm where, out. <laughs> where, where you listen, how you started listening, where uh -huh. you first found me. But I just, I just kind of curious. I, I don't know what prompted the question, but, okay. but several people. I'm talking more than three, less than a dozen. But out of this is out of like maybe forty or fifty responses, mm -hmm. mentioned you specifically. As, that's why they like the show. Really, I, I wouldn't look. I wouldn't lie to you. <laughs> what, <laughs> wasn't there a great Groucho Marx clip about I wouldn't join a club that would have me as a member? Yeah, they have me as a member, right, right, right. That just came to mind all of a yeah, sudden. Yeah. So. Well, that's very nice. No, it was. I, yeah. thought, I thought it was great. In fact, I meant to take a screenshot of those, but then it disappeared <laughs> off YouTube. You know, the chat kind of disappears, so I, I missed the screenshot. Oh. But I did mean, I was, I was fully intending to make sure you knew that. That's very nice. I appreciate that. Yeah. And I don't know if I, I may have mentioned this before. I grew up on radio. I just listened to the radio with my dad in right, the car. right. All the time. And it yep. really, it, it means something to me. So I, I appreciate that. And I, I'm not a radio personality by any stretch. This is your show. But just to have a little sliver of it is, is great fun to me. I have a blast. So. I have a blast. Now we've set the expectations way too high. I know. So let's take them down back down to the gutter. <laughs> let's, let's repeat a story I did earlier this week. Okay. Um, you put this in your, in your fodder that you send to me weekly. Mm -hmm. And I'm more than willing to go to it again. <laughs> it's that good. It's that good. And I'll probably get that mad again. <laughs> Stephen Colbert. I don't know about you, but I am still recovering from watching America's Next Top Justice last night. <laughs> Did you watch the announcements? Did you watch the announcement last night at 9 o'clock? I had a little drinking game. Mm -hmm. I would pour mm -hmm. myself a drink every time my glass was empty. <laughs> I, I like won. that. I think it's kind of funny. Yeah, I, I think I said on the air. Okay, mildly funny. You did. I listened. I you, Oh, you heard it? I yeah. actually listened this yeah. week. Look at me. Mildly funny. Yeah. Right. And Is it, that it? No, no, no. And <laughs> actually, one more thing. I think it was mildly funny because it was mildly clever combined with you didn't see it coming. I think it's one of the problems with today's late night yes. humorous. You know every angle. Right. You know every joke. Even if you don't know the exact punchline, you know where it's heading. Yes. And a lot of comedy is about surprise. So the way he just kind of rolled over that line, not giving a lot of emphasis, like, right. <laughs> when my glass was empty, he just kind of set it. That's almost a Rodney Dangerfield kind of thing. Yeah. You, know, you set it up, you mm -hmm. think you know where it's going, but boom, it goes in an entirely different direction. Yeah, and that's funny. Comedy is, is funny, funny when it it's like funny. that. <laughs> of course, last night the real winner was federal appeals court judge and cover model for Generic Dads Monthly, <laughs> Brett Kavanaugh. Which means I have Trump nomination bingo. See, it's all squares that say white guy. Says the white guy. Says the white guy. The and white guy. Jimmy Kimmel said the same, said something similar. Really? He's also a person of power, just FYI. Oh, really? This attack on people who are white or things that are white is disgusting, it's mindless, and it's offensive, really. Person of power. Okay, we haven't gotten to the punchline yet. <laughs> and it's terrible, so it don't, terrible. don't miss this. That's right, so don't miss this because it absolutely sucks. <laughs> You're listening to The Michael Brown Show.
This rock we're rolling on It's like a circus ride that don't last long Hey, it's Hollywood and Toto on the Michael Brown Show. Happy Friday, everybody. Christian and I are getting ready to mock, uh, uh, you know, Stephen is is kind of like Mike or Michael. It's kind of a generic name. Kind of a generic name. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah, that it's, funny? Generic yeah it's generic because it's common. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I could, I could be a late night humorist. I could be a writer. Stephen Colbert. Colbert. <laughs> All right, let's finish this one. I don't know. Well, you tell me why it irritates you. Yeah, I won, I think, and lost. That's great. It's not, it's not a hard game to play. Now, uh, I don't know much about Kavanaugh, but I'm skeptical uh, because his name is Brett. That sounds less like a Supreme Court justice and more like a waiter at Ruby Tuesdays. Hey, everybody, I'm Brett. I'll be your Supreme Court justice tonight. Before you sit down, let me just clear away these rights for you. It's virtue signaling like you just, his audience knows that this particular justice will strip our rights away. There's that. There's the laziness of it. There's not really a joke there. Bread as a common joke, like a waiter. You mentioned earlier this week that uh, you were kind of upset that they're making fun of waiters or servers. Yeah. I kind of get that. I'm more like, it's, it's so mechanical that he must insult this fellow. He's not going to look at his let his rulings. He's not going to look at his biography. He's not going to look at anything about him. And he's you know, he's, ac- he's across the board qualified. That doesn't matter. He's liberal. This is a, an appointee by a GOP politician. Therefore, he must attack or make fun of or somehow just kind of deconstruct it in a way. Like like he had no choice. And so he's stuck there thinking, well, he's not unattractive. This fellow. He's not. Uh, he's oh, not no, lacking no, no, in accomplishments. No, 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 he, he, he was on the cover of Generic White Fathers. Right, but that's not or something. Like he's not ugly. Yeah. He's not like Mitch McConnell is a turtle, which is right, one of, yeah, you know, one right. of the kind of the claims that they say. It's just it's a big bowl of nothing. It's a big bowl of this is what we have to do, this is what our expectations are. We're not gonna even go to the extra mile and think of anything clever. It's gonna be the generic, uh, everyone's gonna die, our rights will be taken away, we're gonna live in the handmaid's tale two point oh. It's just lazy and knee jerk. And we have a very specific audience, and we don't give a darn about the other audience that might tune in. Is there one conservative watching his show at this point, or any of these shows? I, I can't I, imagine I really it because it. it's in the clipping service. Yeah, that's right. It's like it's like was a sadomasochism when you 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 enjoy right, pain. Yeah, yeah. It's the only reason why, if I suddenly turn toward that in my in my private right, life, just, I tune every trying, night. You're just trying to suck. you're just trying to create misery for <laughs> that's yourself. That's right. I I guess it bug, bugged me because. And, and I have a friend who's very good at this. In fact, mm-hmm. I love watching him in action of sitting down in a restaurant, and if the waiter or waitress gives the least little indication that they're, I mean, just the, any opening, he looks for any opening uh-huh. to then start asking about themselves. Like, well, Brett, I, I, mean, I can just see Chris doing this. Mm-hmm. Some guy walks up to us in a Chili's, I guess because I don't go to Ruby Tuesday. So he walks up to us in a Chili's or, I don't care, even a fancy restaurant, and says, hi, my name's Brett. I'll be serving you tonight. Mm-hmm. I can hear Chris instantly saying, well, Brett, thank you for doing that. By the way, um, you know, are you uh, you're married? You got a boyfriend? You mm-hmm. got a girlfriend? You going to school? He'll ask a litany of questions knowing that uh-huh. there's something in there that this guy will latch on to. And by the end of the evening, not only has Brett taken incredibly good care of us, Mm -hmm. but we have found the most fascinating story about, you know, I moved here from, you know, Kalamazoo because my father died of cancer and I didn't know Uh what to do and I came out here because it was the mountains and thought I'd be a ski bum and realized you actually have to work for a living and you find the most fascinating stories. Yeah. And what Colbert is doing is mocking those people. Mm -hmm. You think I'm overreacting? Um, I get your point. I understand it. I'm just a more. I'm just more uh, aghast at the laziness of the whole construction. Yeah. Well, well, and I, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying. Right. It, and, and, and listen, jokes hit people certain ways, and I, I also don't want to be too like you can't mock a server because we we don't want to be the snowflakes that we critique all the time. But I do. It, there's a there's a smugness to it. I mean, there's a smugness right. about everything and that I think Stephen it's Colbert the, it's, does. It's the smugness mm-hmm. because Lord knows, Lori Lynn and I, when we had the food segment, uh-huh. we have mocked crappy servers. Yeah. You know, not because of their name, but because they were. 
in a bitchy mood and they were crappy servers. I worked at the Olive Garden as a server for six months. It was extremely hard and I have total respect for anyone yeah. I, to this day. And also, I've got two kids. I want to make sure that I treat a server with respect because I want them to treat yeah. servers with respect as they grow up. It's right. important to me. Right. Uh, these people are, are really hustling, yeah. and most of them are very good. I, I rarely get a bad server with a bad attitude or a bad service. Mostly they're excellent. Even if they make mistakes, it's always, I'm so sorry, I can help you. Yeah. You know, if I walked into a restaurant and saw you with your two kids, <laughs> I'd probably around. just turn around and walk out. I'd just, it's I'd just for the say, best, I, really. I mean, let's just go to McDonald's. Let's just, you know, Taco Bell. <laughs> can you bring me with you? <laughs> that would be a good thing. And then I would just, like, wave to you, like, <laughs> come on. And you could say, honey, i got to go to the restroom. And then just, I, we'd drive you through Taco Bell, and we would get you whatever you wanted. Or you just see me sink in the chair slower and slower. <laughs> You know I love your kids because I don't have to live with them. You don't. You see, Flash is the best of them. I do. That's what. That's what's. You, you know, <laughs> this is way off the topic now, but shocking. That's what's great about Instagram and Facebook. You, you're able to present your children, for example, yeah. in the best possible light. Your children are angels according <laughs> to their Instagram accounts. That's funny. Now I can see the evil coming out of their eyes. Yeah, you can because I've had my own kids, so I can see that evil coming you know, just squirting out of their eyeballs. But <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, you know, I turned fifty in a couple months, and uh, someone on. Twitter or Facebook said, oh, you look, I didn't know you were that old because you look younger. I'm like, yeah, I put the best pictures of myself on Facebook. <laughs> right, exactly. Put the right. picture where I look like hell. That's right. I go to a professional <laughs> photographer and we get makeup and everything That's right. Else. My glamour Duh. shots are all there for all to see. <laughs> exactly. Naturally posed. You and I should have had a glamour shot. Like, <laughs> That's right. Do one of these like back to back. <laughs> God, no, I want to throw up. <laughs> Angie, can you get the photographer, what, uh, what's his name? Can you get what's his name up here to do a, a photo of me and Christian hugging hugging each other? Uh-huh. Hugging? Yeah. No, no, do that, like, you know, the love couch kind of thing, whatever it is. You I know. think, like, our backs are to each other, and we're kind of looking at each other, like, being all sort of uh, saucy. <laughs> oh, God, I want to throw up so badly. <laughs> I see this whole photo shoot Yeah, I do, too. Yeah. I do, too. I do, too. And props. We have to have props. Oh, props, of course. Maybe I'm holding a flower, and you're looking at me askance or something. That's <laughs> yeah, getting creepy. Okay. That's getting totally oh, it creepy. started creepy. Trust oh, me. Oh, did it? Oh, okay. <laughs> you brought the creep. <laughs> I always bring the creep. I don't know why. Hey, um, Stephen uh, Colbert. I'm sorry. So I think we've we've killed that one. Did we get to the punchline? We did. We got to the punchline. Yeah. You have a story up on your website, Hollywood and Toto. That's five dollars, by the way. I'm gonna start charging my <laughs> sure. Name. So at Hollywood and or Hollywood and Toto dot com. The Twitter's at Hollywood and Toto. And this one caught my attention because. Andrew Breitbart was actually a good supporter of mine. How Andrew Breitbart inspired the Gosnell Project. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this. Well, it's not direct. No, I know. I, I know. I'll describe it. So, Fella McAleer and Ann McElhaney yeah. are two filmmakers. They're playwrights. They're movie producers. They do a little bit of everything. And I think they're amazing because they keep switching from project to project, poking people in the eye with the truth and going at it from a right-of-center perspective in a way that 98% of other conservatives don't do. I mean, God bless the conservatives. Right. They're not doing what these two are doing. Yeah. And it's all based on a philosophy that Andrew Breitbart espoused. Which was? We'll get right back to get that. Get right back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we will. Yeah, hang on. We'll get back to that. You're listening to The Michael Brown Show. family has discovered unpublished songs. Imagine that. I know. It happens all the time, right? Yeah. But I think a lot of musicians record right. and record. Right. They shake things up. Yeah. They don't release material, so yeah. hope it's good. I hope it's good, too. Yeah. Because I'll probably lay out whatever the stupid amount <laughs> is right. to, to, to buy it. Uh, so back to Breitbart. So mm -hmm. An Andrew really was to be the happy warrior, but to take it right back to them. Yes. Kind of, you know, I there's been a lot of debate about whether he would like President Trump uh, I think in the past he's been negative on President Trump, but I do think he would applaud his take it right to him approach, yeah. you know, kind of punching back twice as hard with the media. Uh, two quick notes. One, uh, I was hired by Andrew Breitbart at, to be at Breitbart.com. I worked on Big Hollywood for a while, and shortly after I was there, he passed, which was like just, I'll never forget going clicking on the Drudge Report and seeing this little picture of Andrew saying Andrew Breitbart dead. I was like, I, I, I just ah, couldn't believe what? it. Yeah. I mean, there's so many emotions flooding through me, besides the fact that 
we lost this giant of a man, and he was a giant of a man. But also, I was talking to uh, Ann McElhaney about this project, the Gosnell Project, about Dr. Kermit Gosnell, the abortion doctor, uh, convicted on three counts of first degree murder, murder. And what they told me was, you know, what Andrew said was politics is downstream from culture, that the culture really matters, and that conservatives have abandoned it at their own peril. And what they do is they do documentaries and plays and all these different things to get their message out in a way beyond the, we've got a white paper, yeah. we've got some op-eds. Right, right. And again, those all have a place in our yes. culture. They matter too. I don't want to dis discount right. them. But sometimes the movie can have a, an amazing impact on people. And they've done Frack Nation. They've done a movie called Mind Your Own Business, which sort of takes the, the flip side of environmentalism. Mm -hmm. They did a play on Ferguson using the court transcripts from the, uh, yeah. uh, the grand, grand, jury. grand jury testimony. And now they're doing Gosnell, which was four years in the making. It's a long story. There was a, a lawsuit involved with it. It's clear it's coming out October 12th. They said, that's what Andrew said. Yeah. You've got to kind of reach out to the culture. You've got to tell stories. If someone's, heart's, if someone's heart is going to change, it likely will not be from a white paper. It's going to be from seeing an amazing movie or a play or a musical or something yeah, it's, it's with it's a story embedded a in it. Paper. Yeah. The people who are reading the white papers mm -hmm. are either academicians who just mm -hmm. want to be able to rip apart the other side, and I say that about both sides, yeah. or it's you know nerds like me who just, <laughs> again, want to find out what they're writing so I can rip it apart. Yeah. It's not going to change a, change a mind necessarily. And those are intellectual exercises, right. and they maybe yeah. kind of bolster a particular side or a particular argument. Again, I, I'm okay with that. Yeah. But you've got to have more conservatives in this space, and it's exactly what they do. And one of the things that they also do to shield themselves against critics is what they call verbatim theater, where they take all these sort of court transcripts, and they just make that either the bulk of the play, part of the movie. So you can't really say, oh, you're making stuff up because they're using the, the source material. Yes. They did it with Ferguson. I think it's going to be much less so with the Gosnell movie because it's, it's, a, it's a feature presentation. You can't do that. Right. But they said in the court, those scenes, a lot of verbatim. Yeah. It's amazing. It's funny you mentioned source material. I can't think of the stories this week, but there were two stories that I ended up not doing because I couldn't get to the source material. Mm -hmm. I kept going, oh, I know, I know what it was. It, it wasn't either. It was on Thursday. I, um, there's apparently a letter from the Associated Press found this letter. I forget what it was about now, but I never could find the letter itself. Mm -hmm. But there were all these stories about the about letter. letter. Well, you know. Why didn't the AP, who was the one who got a hold of the leaked letter, mm -hmm. why didn't they publish it? It What's makes, in that letter? Well, it makes that you suspicious. Fit their you know, I think ten years ago, I'm not suspicious. Right now, today in 2018, I'm hyper suspicious. Yeah. How many stories have we seen in the last like two weeks that were, wow, that's inflammatory. Wow, that's terrible. All oh, this paints President Trump in the worst light. Oh, never oh, mind. Never mind. Right. It's it's incomplete. It's not accurate. It's partial context on full context. That's where the media has put us. And what I found fascinating about trying to track down the letter was as I was doing searches on different search engines, it was both right of center mm -hmm. and left of center, all quoting the Associated Press. Nobody had a link, mm -hmm. including the Associated Press, to the actual letter. Yeah, a lot of these sort of, it's almost like a chain of stories that builds off a single source, right. and they all say, blah, 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 said this, yeah. and it kind of expands and it grows, and often in that whole chain, no one says, wait a minute, do we know if the source is accurate yeah. or true? Or even if it's from a legitimate source, a Hollywood reporter for Hollywood, uh, AP for the Associated maybe, Press. I was curious. Dig in. Right. I wanted to know. So I'm sure what the AP reported about the letter mm -hmm. was probably accurate in that regard. What I wanted to find out was what was in the letter that you didn't report on. Yeah. I mean, what if it was like Brett Kavanaugh had paid too much money for a sofa at one point? Yeah, right. And then exactly. had it paid off in not one month, but two months. Right. I mean, that would exactly. be Exactly. That's. That's well, a game changer. That, it's a total game changer. <laughs> and speaking of, speaking of the culture, excuse me, I don't think we should ever discuss the culture without mentioning The View. No, I mean, they're intertwined. Angie, do we have time for a minute and 24 seconds of The View? You, are you ready? Yeah, I always ready. Well I, got, well, I have to get the cursor ready because I know you're going to stop me. <laughs> All right, three, two, one. Do you, is there any setup needed here? Oh, it's it's it's, it's the view. It's Joy Behar. It's the view. It's Judge Kavanaugh. Oh well, boom. Yes. Ready, shoot. We aim. believe in balance of power be. and checks and balances, and we haven't got that in any of the three uh, branches of government. Because. Right.
<laughs> both we both just yeah. <laughs> we need a buzzer a joy <laughs> buzzer right. mm. <laughs> there's no checks and balances and she had I, no problem when obama was first in office and he had both houses and the white house yeah. I, I don't think she complained about the she, balance well, of the checks did, and balances she didn't complain and then the other thing that she doesn't get is the three branches i mean they the, the constitution in our framework is so symmetrical that the three branches of government in and of themselves mm -hmm. are a check and balance, let alone a divided legislature and mm -hmm. certain executive powers and certain judicial power. I mean, there are all sorts of checks and balances. Yeah, like that's why President, I mean, sorry, dictator Trump can't right. get anything done sometimes because all these checks and balances keep sweeping in. Right, right. No. Yeah. <laughs> But this implication, I think, from gonna people on the, but people on the left, like last night, Shannon Bream, who's a host on Fox News, wasn't comfortable doing her broadcast outside with all the protesters, and there are people with signs with blank spaces saying "We hate blank," just waiting <laughs> to fill in. That was great, by the way. Uh, I thought it was fantastic. Again, Stephen Colbert, if he were an honest broker of comedy, would have pounced on that. Right. He could, because he could have done the bit where you fill in the blank yeah. I mean, any number of I things. think XX is deeply unqualified. Right. I mean, there's lots of things you right. can do. Slightly funnier than Brett is a server's name at Ruby Tuesdays. Whoever it is, and I mm -hmm. think the left does themselves a disservice when you're not even looking at the person presented in front of you and you've already made the decision. But, That's not happening on this show, but I just... <laughs> That's not happening on this no, show? She's, she's going to show up every day, to be fair. <laughs> There are people outside doing it, but the input, left is taking a page from Mitch McConnell's book. But what I want to say is that the oh. idea. Seal time. What book? <laughs> I, 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 it's a pamphlet. I assume she means the playbook. Yes. Okay. Um, you know. <laughs> Here it comes. Well, uh, yeah, there's there. It would take more. It, it take more. This audience already understands that. One, first of all. We're not, Republicans are not the ones that invoked the nuclear option. That was Harry Reid. And Mitch McConnell actually warned Harry Reid that if you go, go down this path, you're mm -hmm. going to regret it. And now they're regretting it. Yes, again and again. Right. But the second point is there is no comparison between Donald Trump appointing a nominee before a midterm election and Barack Obama appointing a nominee or, or making a nomination prior to a presidential election in which he is not a candidate so that there will be a, an entirely new president. Apples and kumquats. Brought to you by Christian Toto. So send your <laughs> complaints to. Here comes the hate mail. <laughs> I was going. I was going to give your cell phone number. But I, <laughs> yeah, I probably shouldn't oh, do that. But should. you know, you can always go to Christian's website and send him hate mail through the website. There you go. At ho or HollywoodandToto.com. Be gentle. Or just tweet him. Just tweet him right now. Tweet Christian right now and tell him what a he's had a rough week. Just tell Christian <laughs> what a great guy he is. Just flooding with loving tweets. Maybe Joy will see one, and oh. Joy would, you know, retweet. Joy chimes something. in. Yeah, Joy chimes in. That would be bucket list kind of material. It would. Be, it yeah. would be, wouldn't it? And you've right. said this before. They're like, yeah, this is like a stolen experience. This is what ha elections have consequences. And yes, Republicans have three branches of power. Now we're getting two more seats in the Supreme yeah. Court. Yeah. But it's why voting is so important. But the yeah. idea that we're living in like some, I don't know, totalitarian fascist country where this was just appointed by a dictator. I, I thought it was. <laughs> That's what everybody keeps telling me. That's that's the that's the narrative. I don't. Peter, it's just a lie, and I, I think we have to be intellectually honest. Well, he's about under that. investigation. We're going to have Alan Dershowitz on today, and mm -hmm. I'd like to ask him about that. Why would a president who's under investigation by the FBI for obstruction of justice and collusion be allowed to pick a Supreme Court justice who will be there? I'll be dead. There are many oh, people God. in this room who will still be alive and have, need abortions and what have you, need health care. How dare he be allowed to do this when well, he is under investigation? I think 
By the way, the Tom Petty song is still playing, I think. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's a new format. It all music all the time. All music all the time. Right. <laughs> you look like you want to say something. Are you're, maybe you're juggling multiple thoughts? Well, I am jugg I'm juggling multiple thoughts okay. because I'm, I'm, I'm harping back to a Jeffrey Tubin clip I played earlier this week. Oof, that's bad. Who said that the founding fathers never envisioned people living into their 80s. <laughs> so we, you know, most people were dead by their 50s. Uh -huh. Of course, he ignores the fact that Thomas Jefferson and John Adams lived into their 80s, but that's neither here nor there. Um, and so the Constitution doesn't really envision lifetime appointments, even though that's precisely what the Constitution says. And he's a professor of law? Well, Ruth Bader Ginsburg is at least pushing 50 at this point, right? Yeah, well, I think 47. Come yeah. On. Don't, don't, yeah. Don't stretch it. Yeah. I mean, she looks good for age. Don't get me wrong. And don't, and don't forget, it's not Justice Ginsburg. Mm -hmm. It's RBG. Notorious. Notorious. RBG. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you got lots of thoughts. I'm just going to, this is, this is your yeah, floor no, no, right no, now. No, no, no. Just go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you want <laughs> I mean, where, do, where does one begin with Joy? I mean, she doesn't even kind of counter what Meghan McCain had just said. Just kind no. of lets that wash over her. Just it's it's that if 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 Brett Kavanaugh, the server from Ruby Tuesday, <laughs> is able to get through the U.S. Senate because they're cheating with Mitch McConnell's book or something, mm -hmm. then women will be in back alleys with coat hangers. We won't have health care. All of our rights are going to be. Dis I mean, it is Armageddon. It is one man, one and man. To be fair, Armageddon. we've had, we've already had a net tr neutrality Armageddon. We had the tax reform Armageddon. We're we're kind of running out of Armageddons. I okay. mean, the zombies yeah, should right. be like yeah. walking right. around. Right. As we, I'm surprised they're not banging on the studio door th right now. You know, maybe you and I don't realize it, but Ooh, they are. We're the last ones left. We're the last ones. We got to keep talking then. Yeah, that's right. We can't leave now. <laughs> we just, right. you're, you're stuck in the studio. <laughs> we'll have to get Uber Eats to bring us. That is Armageddon. <laughs> Joy, joy, joy. Joy, oh, she's a big... Although I will say the the sales the seals did pop up early in the clip. I didn't hear him in the in the in when she kind of went on her rant. Did even they realize that maybe? Oh, no, you're right. Or maybe I'm wrong. Play it. Play no, the, the last right. bit. It's just, it's just, the the, the joy crescendo. I don't know, totalitarian fascist country where this was just appointed by a dictator? It's just a lie. And I, I think we have to be intellectually honest about that. Well, he's under that. investigation. We're going to have Alan Dershowitz on today. And mm -hmm. I'd like to ask him about that. Why would a president who's under investigation by the FBI for obstruction of justice and collusion be allowed to pick a Supreme Court justice who will be there? I'll be dead. There are many oh, people God. in this room who will still be alive and have, need abortions and what have you, need health care. How dare he be allowed to do this when like, he is under investigation? Oh, there they come. No. Oh. You look disappointed. I know I this is radio, but your, 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 I am. your whole presentation I just, am. just changed. Because I thought you were right. I, I thought, thought I was I, right, too. I, I thought there was silence. I blame there, you because you cut the clip off too early. You, you, you sent us the clip, Marco. <laughs> you sent the clip to us. We didn't. We didn't do I don't listen to this stuff. Everything. <laughs> you don't, do you? You send no. it. You send it. Oh, by the way, the whole this is not a dictator uh, dictatorship. There was no the seals kind of they laid down for that one. Yeah, that wasn't a rallying point. Well, it is a dictatorship. <laughs> it is. All right. So, um, I don't know what the weather's supposed to be this weekend. Do you have any movie recommendations? You know, I love the Ant Man and the Wasp. I think we talked about that recently. Yeah, I need to go see that. A uh, skyscraper with Dwayne Johnson. It's okay. It's more generic action. He's always very appealing and likable, but it's 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 really dumb. Logic gaps abound. I thought that Hotel Transylvania 3 was fun, but the least of the three films in that franchise. So that's just yeah, a couple of quick okay. off the top of my head. But uh, hey, nothing wrong with a cool movie theater. But dude, Ant-Man and the Wasp is a lot of fun. I've heard that now from several people. Yeah. We, have, we haven't made it yet, but uh, your professional critique uh -huh. now matches the amateur critiques <laughs> of, the rank uh, of my little... The rank and, and they okay. are ranked. Well, then I want me. next week, I want your, uh, are, your full yeah. review. Well, that, that assumes I find time to get to go this weekend. <laughs> you get too many dogs. You can't do I anything else. got too else. many dogs. You know, Tamara's at the undisclosed location. She may or may not be back. Uh -huh. I, uh, whether she's coming back today or not, I, I, I don't know. So, How big is your puppy now? Um, so I, I tried to pick her up on the scales <laughs> in the bathroom. <laughs> is that why you're limping around the studio <laughs> yes, today? and she is. She's uh, 70 pounds. Oof. She's not even six months old yet. En route to how big? Dad was 160, mom oh. was 1... Wait, 160? Or, yeah, 160. And I think mom was either 120 or 130. Svelte. Yeah. Supermodel. Yeah. Too, <laughs> uh, anorexic. <laughs> <laughs> Let's eat. Coming up next. The Michael Brown Show continues after this.